Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hi, the Stampler Stampede. That's what I'm calling my, my fandom. Love you guys. If you were looking at me, you could see that I was crying a little bit, but this is just on audio, and so you can't really tell. Um, I feel like I owe an apology to some people. <clears throat> the apology is because I said a joke that was, uh, well, the execution of the joke was not funny, even if the idea of the joke was. But part of my growing as a person made me really step back and say, whoa, Ron, maybe even if you'd said the joke as good as it could have been, it might not still have been a good joke to say because it might have hurt people's feelings. So if your feelings were hurt by my joke about women, I want to say I'm sorry and that it won't happen again that way. To all those who feel like I've wronged them, I would like to offer you free concert tickets to RonCon, the Buy I'm Ron farewell tour, which will be taking place outside of Neverwinter. It's going to be a great, legit show. You're going to have a blast. Again, I am crying. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't comment if it's a bad thing. Okay, so this is a new video. Apparently my, my apology video did not go over well and I have to apparently apologize for that. I can see how you felt maybe because you couldn't see me crying that I wasn't actually apologizing enough. This video is not monetized. The last one was and still is. So go ahead and smash that like button. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast about four dads from our world, this world, the world you're listening in. Season two should be a BDSM podcast. Damn. Oh, that's, that's a good the idea. answer. What a safe choice. Yeah. <laughs> Considering how not uncomfortable you were doing all the BDSM stuff in that episode, I'm sure you'll be really happy to do that for Are literally three years Are you against personal growth? Life. Like, we'll just all get that's more fair, comfortable yeah, with it. That's fair, yeah. I guess that's your character arc. I was uncomfortable with doing D&D, and now look <laughs> yeah. at me. I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is about four dads from our world flung into a land of high fantasy and magic in a quest to rescue their lost sons. One step closer every week. One step closer to the edge. Are they about to break? We're definitely not a step closer. We lost one son. <laughs> so we're farther away than <laughs> we've ever been. you gained a Two steps true. forward, one step back. <laughs> My name is Freddie Wong. I play Hi, Freddie. Hey, 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 Freddie. hey, Will. I play Glenn Close, the rock and roll <laughs> bar Ooh, Matt dad. Hey, Matt. <laughs> the rock and roll bar dad of the group. This week's Glenn fact. Glenn... Uh, was Glenn's Satoshi? He's the guy who invented Bitcoin. Okay, what? No, he's not. <laughs> Hold on, you can't. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. He can do whatever he wants. I that's canon. No, now. that's not canon. <laughs> that's canon. I think we all get one veto on a dad <laughs> fact. I think that's the new rule. Oh, I would have spent mine on you <laughs> quite a while ago. Uh, I don't want to get too much, but I do want to clarify. So you're saying canonically Glenn created Bitcoin, or is there some like Satoshi Nakamoto is mm -hmm. the alias. I don't care about him. I care about Glenn. Of a pseudonym of a person who supposedly created Bitcoin. Glenn claims he oh. is Satoshi Nakamoto. Is he? No. He would not be running around doing Christmas cover band DJ stuff if he had invented Bitcoin. But what if he sold it too early? Oh, <laughs> oh the iron. Yeah, just because you invented money doesn't mean you have money. I'm going along. It would along. be embarrassing if you didn't, but it doesn't mean <laughs> it. I'm going along with that fact because maybe Bitcoin will help us in this final battle. Let's not throw out any things that could help mm -hmm. us in the final battle. The concept of Bitcoin might work here in the Forgotten Realms. You know what I mean? Like you get a bunch of goblins solving math problems. <laughs> it's like, you see, once they've solved these Sudokus, you can spend this money. But why is it worth anything? Well, because they have to spend all this effort to solve these Sudokus. Hey, everybody. Entire, just, just, just farms of goblins solving Sudokus. God, that's, dark. that's why Glenn wants to stay in the Forgotten Realms because he sees like, a bunch I of I got rooms. all these ideas. I could do the movie yet. What was it, the one? Yesterday. Yesterday. Glenn's just going to do the Beatles. Everyone's going to be like, this song sucks. <laughs> 
Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, the stay-at-home coach dad. Who wait, do you Matt, prefer to go by Matthew? Do I always say Matt Arnold? You just said Matthew. No, that's some, true. No, wait, you just said Matthew. Wait, Have we been, up, like, incorrectly calling you Matt? Sometimes you do say Matthew. Yeah, sometimes I say Matthew. Hold on, shit. Going through that's, the transcripts. Honestly, that's I'm pretty a, wild, I guess. Yeah, I've never been one to really care what people call me. <laughs> 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 and, and that, having low and self-esteem. that makes you invincible. <laughs> I respect that. Matt Arnold in. Call me by a name. Hi, everybody. This is Matthew Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad who became a barbarian upon entering this magical world of dragons. What and do your parents Lindsay. call you? I don't know. Matt. One. Matt, Matthew. They call me both. Sometimes the wrong name. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah, so. all. Honestly, wow. I don't know what people call yeah, me. The energy is just <laughs> electric. Yeah, you right Speaking now. of this Turn energy, down, well, Jesus. no, I mean, it's fitting because this seven deadly sin oh. I'm going to talk about today is sloth. Aww. Probably because I was a little too lazy to really come up with a good dad fact. <laughs> Which is a fact unto itself, if you think but about Darryl's it. But Daryl's a pretty high energy, like pretty get it together person. Like he's not really lazy. Like Slash definitely not his problem, except when it comes to pretty much all things technology. So <laughs> he's probably never responded to an email. And that is why he still has his Nokia. It's like the moment he even gets close to a phone store, he's just, let's get some ice cream. It's fine. We don't need to do this. So yeah. What if the phone store has a thing where it's like, hey, what if your cell phone was on your belt? I mean, he has one of those. I mean, clearly that's what won't get it from Amazon. He'd rather go to the store than like actually work uh, on. Rather go to a small business like yeah. Verizon <laughs> or small business <laughs> or T-Mobile. T-Mobile. All right, Will. Hi everyone. I'm William Campos. I am the voice of Henry Oak, Birkenstock, rocking, crunchy, munchy, hippie nature, Drew dead. My Henry fact this week is that Henry's dad was the elusive bank robber DB Cooper. <laughs> oh my God! Yes. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not my dad fact. My fact this week, we're talking about, you know, Matt's been doing the seven deadly sins. I'd like to talk about Henry's deepest, darkest secret. Oh, shit. This is mm-hmm. the darkest, most fucked up thing okay. to Henry okay. about himself. All right. Henry knows that his Birkenstocks aren't vegan. <gasps> That's great. So Birkenstocks, this is that fact brought to you by the fact that I finally plunked down for a pair of Birks, my Mm -hmm. first ever, and they're glorious. But they're they're leather. And I was like, they have a vegan Birkenstock. And I was like, no, I want the leather ones. And the footing of like the sole is suede. Like Mm -hmm. you're parking your bad boy feet in suede, my man. It is glorious. That's why they're so expensive. Yeah, they cost a pretty So like an animal died for you to wear. Yes. So here's what I'm thinking is I think Henry got his first pair as a gift. Mm. And so he's like, well, it'd be wrong to throw them out. Uh-huh. That he'd be disrespecting the animal. And then, oh, baby, those shoes, man. Like, he just. Oh, so he keeps buying leather. So, ones. so, no, but not every time he needs to re up with a new pair, he's got to find a new way to be able to get them so that he can half ass justify it to himself. So he'll be like, hey, could you get me a pair of Birkenstocks for my birthday? But he's not going to tell you that there's a vegan mm. one. And then he's hoping you're going to go to the store and, you know, like that they're not going to have it because they don't really have it in oh. a lot of stores. So it's like every time he's just getting a little closer and closer. I think the last time he just straight up, like, someone got him vegan ones and then he lost them <laughs> that's and, dark whoa you know, Damn. Yo, that's extra really? waste. What you wasted? Yeah, well, he we wasted the vegan ones. He's like these shoes. What's up? That was something. That was energy. That's that was waste. water. That's well, water. He, no, he put them somewhere and hoped that someone else would go pick them up okay. and have them. Oh, he, he did that. For the world. He paid it forward <laughs> to a stranger. No, if you ever wonder like why there's like Henry has this weird tension in his energy, it's because every step is a lie. Every step, <laughs> every piece step of is, a, is reminds wow. him the pleasure in his feet reminds him that he's a hypocrite. That's my dad fact for this week. Hi, I'm Beth May and I play Ron Stampler, emotionally detached stepfather and rogue. Fun fact about Ron this week, a fact that has been compiled throughout this entire intro as everybody else was introducing themselves. Ron never actually knew what FOMO meant. Even when Glenn explained that it was fear of missing out, like it went over Ron's head. Hayden's explanation didn't cover it either. Ron has been thinking, and he's come up with a few ideas of what it might mean instead. We've got fear of musical overtures. Wow. Mm, okay, okay. Facts on mystery orbs. Facts on mystery <laughs> okay. orbs. Friday, okay. Monday, oh no. <laughs> wow. That's good. That's objectively better. That's good. He beats Fra- better. FOMO. That's First good. of my opportunities. Um, <laughs> uh. Fist, oral, marriage, orthodontist. I guess it's like an order of sex. Yeah, okay. those are the bases, I believe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the best forms of penetration. Feet, ow, my orthotics. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Fucked on my ottoman. <laughs> 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 um, I 
I think that's you it. Gen- yeah. This sounds sarcastic, but like you genuinely are a poet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, that is not sarcastic. I'll take a picture of this. That I'll should be the title of your next book is Fucked on My Autumn. Now. Yeah. <laughs> People be like, oh my God, what does it mean? <laughs> Hi, I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your dad. I don't really have much of a dad fact today. Got a second wax. It's what they said. Oh. It's easier the second time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that means we're dealing with smooth Anthony this yes. time. Yeah, well, right, guys, we are recalibrate. We were expecting stubble Anthony. No, 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 but we're I'm, nice, I'm going to be nicer Anthony. this time. I don't know what it does to your personality that you can just say you got your asshole waxed the second time in a public forum and just not have any expression or emotion oh, it's lack of whatsoever. Shame. <laughs> but yeah, that's Anthony right now. You know how you don't lot. care what people call you? I don't yeah. care what people that's anything not the same me. Thing. You know, Matt, Matthew, hey, everybody got my ass waxed. <laughs> then I'll call you he of unwaxed ass. <laughs> Jungle butt. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite song. <laughs> it's just me over here with my jungle <laughs> butt. <laughs> Okay, so last episode, you uh, did a bunch of prep for the big fight. Henry went to Oakvale and got his mother, Autumn, the crab mech, and a bunch of Oakvalians to come by. How and many Oakvalians did we get, by the way? I was thinking like 20. 20? Wow. 30 to 50 feral Oakvalians. Feral Oakvale. <laughs> yeah. But you said they're druids, right? They are druids, but I'm saying they're all pretty low level, like one or two. Okay. But they are feral. I'm just saying they're all level two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's round up. <laughs> they all have like animal souls if you remember they, they oh kinda that's got... right they're like animals that think they're humans is that like my dog Brasco? Yeah. yeah it's kind of the vibe ron and daryl went to do maybe the funniest scene i think we've ever done in the show i mm-hmm. agree with that here here talking to doug's parents to try to get some dna from him so they could revive him <laughs> using the remote, <laughs> we did. which you did and we ended last episode as you use the return button on the remote control to bring doug Back to life. Now, if everyone could give me an Arcana check, please. Arcana. Arcana. 14 plus 3, 17 for Glenn. 13 plus 0 is 13. 6 plus 7, 13. I got an 11. Glenn, only you notice. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that uh, Fiat currency is meaningless. It's <laughs> 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 a fucking lie. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, based on the things that Aaron has told you about Peyton and all those kinds of things, that the thing that makes a person a person is a combination of their soul and their memories. Mm-hmm. And you can be like Peyton and have a soul with no memories but you feel magically that Doug has memories, but no soul. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. We what? pet cemetery no, I mean, Doug. He was always like that. <laughs> no Sometimes different. Doug is better. <laughs> <laughs> Doug has memories, but no soul. Yeah, so he remembers sort of the way that he's supposed to act vaguely, but the like... The soil of an intern's heart is so... Yeah. <laughs> So he's the perfect intern. <laughs> it sounds like what you're describing <laughs> is an ideal like worker, an ideal unit of productivity. I guess in a capitalistic enterprise. I mean, uh, hell, like Fritz Lang's Metropolis, we got one of those. Okay, folks. Criterion Collection. <laughs> Slow down. I was literally going to say Brazil, so we're going to get you from both yeah. angles. <laughs> you mean, if you just said Brazil, I mean, you we wouldn't have said Terry Gilliam Brazil. <laughs> I know who directed that movie. It was Fritz Lang. I'm going to kind of like gesture to the rest of the dads over. Like, hey guys. Hey, what's quick. up, Glenn? What's hey, up? Doug, it's great to see you. But we're going to talk for one second. But thanks again for the coffee, bud. I'll be here. Okay. Hey, Doug, can you check what if anybody else, like especially the boys and anybody else, wants some drinks or whatever? No coffee for my boys. No coffee. Just decaf for them. Decaf or- for the boys. And then coffee orders for the other like 30 people. I mean, here. see yeah. what they want. Not everybody wants coffee. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll go ask. And then he starts going through the like 30 oh, hey, or 40 and people you Doug, have around here. Keep it up, sport. <clears throat> what's up, Glenn? Uh, so I have this like. I call it an intuition, spending a lot of time around crystals and stuff like that. Oh, actually, you, you spent some time oh, around yeah? crystals. Oh, yeah? What too. kind of crystals are you into? Oh, uh... J-O crystals. <laughs> J-O crystals. <laughs> I feel like if anybody tried J-O crystals, it would be Glenn. Wait, is this a thing? <laughs> you know about J-O crystals? I know about J-O Hey, everyone, we're not doing an episode this week. We're all just learning stuff today. Just a little corner of internet history here for you. There's a reference oh, to a Craigslist ad. Which was titled Charge Up and J.O. 38, Houston. <laughs> and then it's a picture of a shirtless guy and a crystal next to him. It says, the crystal I wear around my neck contains an essence that gets recharged no. when I jack it with a bro who also has a crystal. It gives me confidence at work, home, social situations, etc. Nobody knows it's a J.O. crystal but me and my bros. I've seen it glow. 
white <laughs> while jerking it with a butt. That's how I know it's real. You can come over for as long as you want, but I need a picture of you preferably wearing a crystal before I waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way this is Honestly, real. Honestly, that's kind of beautiful. It is. I mean, it's kind of sad because it's it's like also it has this air of like, it's not gay. <laughs> like, I just, I just have friends and we like to jerk off around each other. It's adorable. Oh, no. Uh, I've lost my train of thought completely. We were talking about crystals. Crystals. Glenn, you're into you know crystals. I now know what I'm getting you all for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. If you want to ruin it, just say this one comes pre-charged. <laughs> oh. uh, well, Doug seems to be kind of the opposite of Payton. Not in the intern sense. I mean, he's definitely the opposite of Payton in like so I many don't, ways. What do you mean? I look into his eyes and I don't see a spark of a human being inside there. <gasps> So, you mean like, like what, Glenn? Like, what are you saying? I just think we can probably work him harder. <laughs> oh. So are oh. you? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Is that why you just oh. want to work him harder? Is that all you want to tell us? Well, I just want, I'm getting just, just a group enterprise. I'm getting the everyone's opinion about this. What? I mean, okay. We should still like treat him with respect. Yeah, and, you, you know, we gotta be we nice don't, to him. Yeah. I nice. mean, we brought him back from the dead. You know, we want to, you know. Do dogs have souls? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they absolutely do. Of course do. they have souls. What about fish? Yeah. No. In Anthony's world, he can answer that however he wants as his world. (laughs) But according to the Christian God, (laughs) (laughs) no heaven for fish. Damn. Wait, hold on. Wait, Anthony, does that mean that we could transfer Peyton's soul into Doug to form a complete human being? (gasps) If you wanted to turn this weird combination of people into somebody with Peyton's soul and Doug's memories memories, and then make Peyton's body an empty husk of nothing, then I guess that's something. Yeah, Peyton has memories. He just doesn't have Frank's memories, but Peyton has memories and a soul. Yes. (laughs) It's simple. (laughs) Yeah. But the soul is more important. I don't know if I'd say soul is more important. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. Anyway, that's all. I just wanted to throw that (laughs) observation that I made about Doug. Hey, this cop is really good, though. This is a lot to think about. At least he remembered how to make a good cop. Yes, but wait, wait a second though. There's like resurrection magic and stuff like that. Does that mean like if we get brought back, it's like our soul doesn't come back? Is that what that means? Wait, Doug doesn't have a soul? Doug has a soul? I mean, I'm not a big fan of his. He murdered somebody. He's definitely tainted I mean, he his soul. Anybody, but like, but he's I must like, say that a lack of a soul would be a great asset as a businessman. I don't know. Like, in the back of my head, I've been like, I know this is like a big, scary fight, but it kind of felt like if we died, like, there's probably some ways for us to come back. So I, I'm kind of like, hey, hey, mom, I have a question. My friends and I have a question, mom. Yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ronald. Uh, hi, hi, Mrs. Uh, Henry's mom. Hi, Mrs. Oak. Call me Autumn. Hi, Autumn Oak. Hi, Autumn. You call me Mrs. Oak. <laughs> you call me Autumn. Okay, hi, Mrs. Oak. So, Mom, you know, like, about magic and stuff. You've been here a lot longer. My memory's a little fuzzy. If you cast a spell to bring someone back from the dead, do they come all the way back? Or, like, how does that work? No, 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 they don't come all the way back. Generally, when you bring somebody back, there's something uh, tainted about them in some way. Not necessarily because they, like, turn evil or whatever. It's not a demonic situation. But basically, once their soul goes to whatever plane that they're intended to go to uh, in the afterlife, there's kind of no taking that back unless you go to the plane itself and then convince them to come back. So what you're generally bringing back when you bring somebody back is their memories and sort of their overall form. Uh, Your friend Scam Likely is not entirely dissimilar. He came back kind of weird, right? That's true. He Um, did, yeah. So they don't have a soul. We thought that that Doug was in was in hell, but he was in heaven, and he didn't tell us. Well, that's what I was going to say. That was, yeah, I, I never understood, but one of Carol's favorite shows was Buffy, and yeah, and, and there's like, uh, yeah, there's some, um, I don't know, that that young girl like died, and she was pretty upset when they that brought her young back. Girl, that <laughs> young woman died. And that pretty, young girl she died. She was pretty upset. But when she, she still came all the way back. This seems like a different situation. This is a different yeah. thing, yeah. Okay, wait, so if you come back and then you die again, then there's you can't bring back anything. Even the memories are gone at that point. Uh, it's like Bro. taking a photocopy of a fax. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with you, Mrs. Oak, but that's okay. I, I, okay. I think your separation of memories that and souls doesn't really vibe with. I'm just, hey, do you do not respect my faith though, there, Henry. I'm nope. just saying I disagree. I'm not. I'm not saying. I mean, I I don't want to yuck your religious yum. So it may be the case in your world, but just I'm. That's how things work here. Wow, yes. so tolerant. You're right, Daryl. In our world, when someone gets brought back from the dead, which is a real. Oh wow. Oh wait, no. I was about to say something offensive to you, so <laughs> I'm gonna walk that back. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm gonna God. pump the brakes. Oh, Pain's like, oh, God. I'm going to, you know, oh, Daryl. I'm gonna walk that I, back. I, I I'm think, sorry. I think I think well, we're due for another apology. I, oh, no. I, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. I can't believe you would say something so coarse <laughs> and uh, so unfeeling. I don't know if we should support Henry and um, his. <laughs> okay, um, Ron. <laughs> okay, Ron. I'll see you over there later. 
in wherever the place that people cancel town in cancel town sir <laughs> anyway daryl i'm sorry i think i'm just a little rattled right now but that was that was a pig editing thing of me to say I do think we should all be. This is just something. Yeah, yeah no, it's okay. I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't even Ron hear what you said. Ron is taking notes on this I'm, apology. <laughs> it's just more. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my head around it because, like, I mean, Doug's one thing. I just, you know, memory, soul. It just feels weird that you're separating those two things. But that's okay because, I, I, honestly, I'm just trying to figure out this whole look. Every, like, dad, dad, hold on. Oh, and Mrs. Mrs. Oak again. I wasn't Ooh, trying to be fun. disrespectful. She I'm squeezed just, isn't right next to Ron. I'm just um, Daryl squeezes <laughs> in between Ron and Mrs. Oak. <laughs> 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 Married man, uh, Mrs. Oak. Um, uh, did you hear that? I said he's a married man. Oh, yeah. D- <laughs> does that mean as little as it does in this world, in your world? I don't know. Henry? Ron? I don't I know. Don't, I I'm, Henry. Not in, I'm not saying I'm not it out of this one. <laughs> what, okay. is it, what, what does word mean? No, nothing. 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 I just want... Okay. Oh, Daryl's feeling very uncomfortable. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to figure out this whole Peyton... Like, look, like we got Frank Soul in there, and Peyton's got his memories, and feels like we got this whole daddy magic situation going on, and, and you know, it's just it feels like... Whether it's now or sometime, like, we're going to have to figure out this whole, you know, bring Frank back and what that's going to be like. So I'm just trying to figure out what's going to, it's weird. It's like, I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen, like, before I leap off the diving board. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, Ryan. I didn't mean to. I'm just, I'm trying to come up with an analogy. No, like, I'm, no, I, I'm trying to figure I, out what's going to happen before it's going to happen. Maybe we just got to do it and pull off the bandaid. I don't know. Well, no, I, I understand, I guess, some of that, Daryl. It's just, I think you're, you know, if you want something, but you're scared of what you might lose. Yeah. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's I mean, scary. We're going to have to break the anchor at some point, and I think I just keep trying to, like, figure out what's going to happen so when if, the anchor breaks. Yeah, look, I mean, you're right. Is we got to talk about this eventually. And Okay, we don't need to talk about it now. <laughs> no, I'm saying we, we, I'm saying we should talk about it now. Okay. Peyton is, you know, if I remember how it works, there's the bowl, and you break the bowl, and then Peyton's going to remember all the Frank stuff with your dad, that from being your dad, yeah. right? That contains all of his memories. Yeah, his right? memories, right? Yeah, and yeah, his memories, yeah. Once he remembers being your dad, then don't, like, doesn't Peyton have to, you know, we have to, but like. I think he'll remember both, though, right? Like, it doesn't just rewrite. Autumn says, yeah, it's not going to rewrite. He's going to remember being Peyton and your dad. He's going to be, like, a, a sort of Frank and Peyton, a sort of Frank and Peyton, if you will. And he's going to remember, and so and my dad's going to wake up and be like, oh, I've been dead. And you're old now. What's going on? What's happened with everybody? Well, yeah, he'll have Peyton there to chill him out. But that's, he's Peyton, though. I don't know. It's pretty he freaky to me, too. I need some time. It would be, uh, it's just we don't have time to think about this, but it'd be nice Wait, if I had Darryl, time to let me say this. something real quick. Okay. <clears throat> I know that you can't predict what's going to happen, and that can be scary, but there have been lots of things that have happened on this little adventure of ours that have been terrible and that I haven't predicted and that I didn't want to happen. And despite all of that, I am here with you guys and I have my stepson, my, my son, Terry, and I am okay. And so there are a lot of things that you can't predict. And yeah, we might die. (laughs) Oh man, but Ron, you're the, Ron, <laughs> oh, you're the is that, best. Is that it? Ron, is that honestly, it? yeah, what well, Ron said was beautiful. Ron, you're the best. I you know what I knowing that I got friends like you means I'm gonna get through this, and I just can't wait to get out of this and start a business with you, Ron. We're gonna be <laughs> great businessmen. Yeah, hmm. wow. but we will talk about that later. So that's been on my mind a lot too. We'll figure this out. Feels like a nighttime thing. I don't know why. It's just like I always like I have serious conversations Maybe at nighttime. You, Let's talk about what we do next. You, What's next? Okay. It's also currently night. You guys were talking around the campfire. Oh. Oh man, who said that? It was I, nighttime. It's <laughs> not got to. Okay. Sorry guys. I didn't mean to take up the whole thing. Was just trying to figure this no, out. No, it's you got a lot going on, dude. Like okay. And to remind you, because you now have Doug the intern, all of your roles will be a D eight instead of a D ten for how many hours yes. your climax. Oh, we take. know. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Let me see if I've got the lay of the land here. We've got four pillars that I gather are projecting some sort of anti-magic field. Some to be clear, there's a big like model slash drawing of this in the sand with like a whiteboard and like Nick Jr. is helping out and Daryl's been trying to keep track cool of all this. There's a 3D map is what yeah. you're saying? Okay, yeah. so Darryl's we've organized. got these four towers that are powering an anti-magic field. It feels like we need to take these out first. Is that right, Autumn slash Anthony? Is that how the field works? So Autumn is walking around with you looking like General George S. Patton. Or no, it's uh, MacArthur, the one with I the, the corn cob Mothma in the Return of the Jedi scene. Oh, Mon Mothma's <laughs> even better. Yeah, she's standing there looking austere and distant. <laughs> and she says, yes, those four crystals are almost certainly 
powering that anti-magic dome. Do all four of them need to be there? If you take out one, does it take out the whole thing? How does that work? From what I can tell, if you destroy all four of them, obviously the entire field goes down. If you destroy one of them, then it increases the chances that going through will not disable a particular spell. Basically, any magic that tries to go through will have to make a roll, and that roll gets lower depending on how many of those uh, pylons are down. Hmm. There's the four pillars, and then in the field, there's a big wall. And the wall is protected by archers? Do I remember that correctly? Yes, the wall is within the four anti-magic pillars. Mm -hmm. And there are archers on the battlements of the wall itself. There is a catapult they're trying to build within the um, confines of the walls. And there are a bunch of, you know, grunts, the Boreanas and his uh, baddies, everything, and the angry innkeep. Oh, mm -hmm. hold on, guys, I have an idea. What? So we have Roncon uh, happening yeah, yeah. right yeah. here as, yeah. a, as a great Ron. distraction. We're going to need thumping beats from an opening DJ because those bass beats will hide the vibrations and sounds of a group of sappers who are going to dig underneath those four pillars because they cover the magical field, but we don't need to worry about the magical field. We can dig underneath those towers and blow them up from underneath. They well, won't wait, see us Wait, isn't coming. there stuff underneath the ground too? The magical field itself, it looks like a dome, but it's actually a sphere and half That's of that totally sphere is fine. underground, which is fine. Good old fashioned explosives don't necessarily trigger. It's not magic. That's just chemistry and physics, baby. No, yeah, the fire will not be stopped by the anti-magic okay, field. Okay, so explosives. We got dairy, dairy. We got carry four tunnel, carry. Okay, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> we got to dig four tunnels, it's all right? right? Yeah, you got a lot going on. Yeah, man. we got to dig four Doug, tunnels. Can we get another coffee over here for Daryl? Doug, yeah, right at once, at once, of course. So we got to knock down those towers, and the cover is going to be the bass beats from the opening act. Who's going to be kind of a shitty DJ? Okay. I know just the one. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm a great DJ. I was thinking of LeBron James. That's what I was thinking. I'm so sorry. What about, what? what about him? He's so good. He's just really good at what he does. Sorry, you guys aren't Darryl, following me. Are you it's okay? A, yeah, so it's the LeBron James problem. Like, Willie's LeBron James. Like, at the end of the day, you could, like, take out the rest of the team, but, like, if you're not double teaming, if you're not stopping LeBron, like, you're going to lose the game. So I'm just like, maybe we start our strategy from, like, biggest problem back. Like, you know, like, if I was trying to beat LeBron's, I don't even know what team I mean, he's on because it's just LeBron. Like, it's just the LeBron problem. I think he plays for the Dallas Cowboys, I believe. <laughs> he's the one on the Cowboys, right? Daryl's shaking his head. <laughs> Willie doesn't play basketball, and if he did, I don't know. I I think he'd be a lot better than LeBron because he'd probably play defense, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't even know if that's a good joke. I don't even know if that's, like, He was just being able to hear the smile. <laughs> yeah. Ends. Ron's like, all that other stuff sounds really scary, but Willie's really all that I'm thinking about. Yeah, he's at the end. Like, so you're right. we got to come up with our strategy to knock out these that's pillars. True. Taking out the pillars is we've nothing. We've got to get past the wall. That's a pretty big one. But then you're right. Then we've got the dads themselves. And who's the center of it? you got Willie Stampler. He's got to be like a pretty tough customer. I mean, I am concerned about your dad, but I feel like Mrs. Oak here is going to, you know. I mean, she messed him up pretty bad last time, yeah. my mom. I messed up a homunculus of him. He's going to be more powerful when it's okay. him in the flesh. Yeah, but you got us. You got like all the, you know, all those fun druids that we got with oh, us. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm going to fuck his whole thing up. But, uh,. I certainly would prefer to have, you know, my, and she awkwardly tries to like punch you in the arm, my boy by my side. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we're going to be right there, mom. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be really scary. I don't know why I said it. I, it's going to be fun to spend time with you, but the context of the time is not going to be fun. I just, but, you know. I got what you were saying. It's sure. fine. Just a quick question, Autumn. Yeah. Mrs. Oak, can you make homunculuses? Uh, I probably could if I wanted to, if I tried really, really hard. Barry has had a lot more experience than I have in terms mm. of doing soul creepy bullshit magic. Mm. I'm more of a healy stabby type of druid. Uh. But if I had a long enough time to train and hone my skills and stuff, I could hypothetically do that. I mean, we'd have to get a lot of animals to, you know, siphon their souls out and stuff. Hmm. Oh, just mm. put that in the back of your heads, everyone. Maybe okay. maybe something there. And Autumn says, oh, by the way, actually on the on the subject of training, if you all did want to just train your skills. That is something we could spend time doing. My thinking is oh. four climaxions will equal one level up for all of you. Oh, okay. That's something you, yeah, you should be aware of. Because the other thought was that Mr. Close, like, I'm concerned, but not, I don't know. Deep down, maybe it's just the optimist in me. I just like, I don't know. I just feel like ultimately he's going to come down on our side. He just like, he just cares about Glenn too much. Like, I don't know. Just, yeah, I, I sure. He wasn't was, really helpful. I sure, Glenn, what do you think? Oh, I'm going to kill my dad. Wait, what? What? <laughs> wow, yeah. okay. Dang. I think your dad even really want to hurt us in the, Trial, like, yeah. Are you okay? Why do you want to kill him? 
Uh, let's see. Took everything from me. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, was, okay. That's uh, fair. <laughs> oversaw the process, which took everything from me. Was complicit in a corrupt system uh, against everything I ever stand for. If I, you know, listen. If I'm gonna ever do a rage against the machine cover, and I don't rage against the machine, then who am I? You know what I mean? I'm gonna kill my dad. Oh. Yeah. He sucks. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Wow. Sorry. Are you guys? Wait. Hold on. Wait. wait let me just back up for a second. Is it? Are we all not killing our? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the plan. Well, hold on. I thought the plan was we were all gonna kill our dads. I mean, I, do I need to kill all your dads? Like, I'm totally. I'm up for it. My dad's already died. I so I. There's part of me that's like, well, that's already happened. <laughs> it didn't really work out. Is what it you're saying. It didn't really work out when he died the first time. So I was. I was thinking actually, if there's a way that w- we could not kill him because I I don't know I feel like guilty or I don't know I don't want to think it, about listen, it if there's, if there's a way that we can control him and make sure he doesn't hurt us without us uh, killing him and just because you know it's like sometimes I get so mad at him and I, I get so mad at everything that's happened and I'm just like it, death it seems too easy it seems like I, I want him to know I want him uh, to know that he didn't get away with this uh, I see what you mean man Dang, that's, that's intense. That's, yeah. That is better than just straight up. Dang. You you're, now you're making me rethink killing my own. Dang it. <laughs> Look, the way I see it, that as far plan. as our dad, t- okay, there's a couple levels going on here, boys. There's the moral level, there's the empathetic level, and there's the tactical level. And to me, the Daryl's ta- writing these down. He's already written down three <laughs> columns. So on a tactical level, my goal is to get through that portal with my boys, right? Like through that's portal. the goal. You know, if my dad's going to stop me from doing it, then the chips are going to fall where they may, sir. He's been making rules and stuff the whole time. You know, stuff like we can't go back to our world without our anchors. And I don't even know all these arbitrary things and making up these rules and what if we made rules that he couldn't break? What if we found that dragon, Gartok, with the, the bracelets? And he's got bracelets that make him have to do whatever's on the bracelets, oh, right? Shit. That's right. true, because you know what? Gartok, he was shitty dad. I mean, no doubt about it. He Gartok was a pretty was, shitty dad. That, he was the one before... No, okay. well, I was going to say something problematic again, and I'm not going to, but he was the one before CERN, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's yeah. the other one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. There are two totally CERN was a lizard. Gartok equally... was a dragon. Oh, dude. CERN was a good dad that we ruined his entire life, and Gartok was the really bad dad with also really shitty kids. But now he's like, you know, cursed to obey whatever's on the bracelets. Those bracelets right, are really but, powerful. You know, did we get him to write something on those bracelets? You wrote something for him. It was... Treat everybody like you want to be treated or something like that. But then it said... There's um, some stuff about mac and cheese in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What you, so what do you think about You all prepared this part. <laughs> I can smell it on you. <laughs> if we get the bracelets off of Gartok, if we could just find some way to get it on my dad so that he had to obey whatever those, those bracelets said, then maybe we could get away. What it said would be helpful. I do believe there was like a thing where it said like, you have to respect your kids' decisions within a certain boundaries, which, you know, maybe those boundaries don't really apply. I don't know. It feels a little tight. Pretty pretty early in the podcast. It was a big pain in the butt to get Gartok to write them, and I don't know if he's going to help us. I don't think we can just change what they say. We gotta go talk to Gartok, don't we? Like, Mm -hmm. we gotta go, I mean, step one, Find Gartok. So here's what I like about this plan, because like you said, Willie's the head honcho, Mm -hmm. you know? And this feels like if we can get that bracelet on Willie, then a lot of our problems become easier, right? Like if we can disable Willie, if we can take him out of the equation, then the whole thing starts to fall apart. Plus, then it solves the problem of like, how's he going to come back for us? Because, you know, we tell him, you leave us alone, right? So if we can get that Gartok bracelet, maybe, yeah, our battle plan becomes like... Do you remember that movie with the big purple man? Do you remember this one? There was the, the big, big purple big man, man. And then there was the space man and the robot man. What the fuck? This was, I'm not making this up. This was a big movie. Is this Will or? or, or is this a big movie two years ago or so? There was a big purple man and a space oh. man and a robot man. <laughs> and like a, an old man oh from the God. Second World War. Oh my what? God. What movie? <laughs> There's a big purple man and a robot man <laughs> and a person and, and a person from oh, World no, War and the creepy green man too. There was an angry green fellow. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, I can't remember, <laughs> but in the movie there, there was, was one girl. <laughs> <laughs> And in the movie, in a killer shot with all the ladies all lined five. up, like yes, ladies, let's work it. But they had to get the big purple man had this big glove, and they had to get the glove <laughs> off. So I'm saying this is like the opposite of the purple man movie, where we have to put the bracelet on. Hey, are you talking about the Avengers? No, X- I don't think that's what it's called. X Men. X Men. That's what it was. X Men: The Dark Phoenix Saga. <laughs> 
I am 100% confident I, Henry, has said that is the name of the movie. As dads, we are confident in our memory of the movies the kids watched. I remember because it was on TV and I watched about 45 minutes of it standing up behind the couch while drinking a coffee. (laughs) (laughs) It was on the Superstation. So that's good. My my only concern is Gartok's not going to help us. Well, no. well, let's try to talk to him. Maybe we Do should you try, try to talk to him, to him or, or. Yeah, I think we got to go talk to him first. Right. Like, let's see if he can help us. And then, like, you know, let's see what see if he'll give us the bracelet. Right. OK. Yeah. All right. Do you all want to go see Gar talk together? So you'll roll as one climb action. Are we all? Yeah, we'll all go. Yeah, yeah I feel like <laughs> this, this is a, this scary is a dragon, <laughs> a small one, but a dragon nonetheless. OK. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll your D8 for time. So not bad. You only rolled two. Hey, good quick job, one. Doug. Good job, Doug. Good job, Doug. Doug, through his much beloved powers of internsmanship, he has a network. His network, his LinkedIn network of chained ghosts that look at, <laughs> oh my god, that oversee all of mankind. <laughs> you find Gartok working at a crunchy fried meat stand called Captain Crunchies. That was <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Captain That was sent to us by Derek Rochelle. Thank you, Derek. Mm-hmm. Oh no. But thank you, Derek. I'll take a number five, Gar Talk. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? So he's sitting there looking at a fantasy medieval equivalent of a cash register, which is just like a small box with a lever on it. <laughs> and he goes, welcome to Captain Crunchy. So would you like to try Crunchy? And then you say his name and he like slowly looks up and anger just crosses his face. And he pulls up one sleeve of his Captain Crunchy's uniform, and you can see the band that you put around his arm way back when is still there, <gasps> and it's still glowing. And he goes, what do you want? How's, how's it been? How's, hey, how, how are you? <clears throat> I've been treating you right since the whole thing? Uh, I've been fine. I have been the That's definition good to hear, man. of yeah. oh, no, not like, but not good either. My children, they don't want to see me anymore. I haven't seen them since we were all last hanging out. And yeah, I, I don't have a big empire of slaves working for me yeah, anymore. Yeah, you got so a I job. Don't. You're not having slaves. That's no, now good. I'm the slave. Now I'm the one doing the work for somebody They're not else. Paying you? No, they are paying me, well, but so like then, my okay, labor well, is not then. equivalent to the amount of money that I. It's all. This is bullshit. But no, I'm okay. I have a. I have a one bedroom above a tavern it's actually not bad that sounds lovely man welcome to the game (laughs) (laughs) i was winning the game i was the one determining the rules until i met you and now i'm just another piece on the board so do you want a number five really or because there are people behind you uh oh yikes Uh, i I turn around the people behind us hey this is closed (laughs) they're closed we gotta talk to this guy roll persuasion (laughs) They walked into the wrong Chonkies. What's it called again? <laughs> it's called Captain Crunchies, but they I like Chonkies. Chonkies is a better. good nickname. That's Chonkies what the locals is, call it. You know, yeah. how, you know how like, the Australians call McDonald's Maccas? Yeah, it's Chonkies. <laughs> it's Chonkies. Those in the know call it Chonkies. <laughs> exactly, exactly. There's poop on the food, but just today. Come back another day. <laughs> the guard dog's like, I'm working today. 13 plus 14, 27. With 27, a bork and a small dog and a fairy <laughs> behind you. like, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I wanted to get my Chonkies on. And they all head oh, off. It's, it's okay, there's another Chunky's open down the way. Yeah, there's one probably three blocks from here. We're fine. Did the dog look hungry? <laughs> not like starving. It's not like okay. shivering and it's got big eyes. Okay, just making sure. Otherwise, I would get some food. The do- Honestly, the dog just like curses and seems really entitled about it. Oh, okay. Does it walk on two legs? I bet it yeah, does. Yeah, he walks on two legs <laughs> angrily. That's how you know that's an uppity dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gartok, I see you still have the bracelets. I... Yes, the ones that I cannot take off under any sort. Yeah, I have the one, don't be shitty to your kids, and always buy... buy don't good, buy store brand. Don't buy store brand stuff. mac and cheese. Uh, or toilet paper. So, gar- toilet paper. so you can't take them off? Is that how it works? No, I can't take them. If I could take them off, I would take them. Do you realize how cheap store brand mac and cheese and toilet paper are? <laughs> I, would be not li- I would be living they in a two-bedroom. S- yeah. <laughs> they do seem seductive, don't yeah. they? Yes, <laughs> they do. If we get them off of you, can you change what they say for us? The question is, when you get them off, a.k.a. by cutting my arms off, do you have a way to reattach my arms? What if, wait, oh, that's a good question. How are we going to get them off? I just told you, by cutting my arms off. I'm not going to cut your arms off. We're not going to cut your arms off. Just put your job. What if we never put them on? What do you mean, Ron? What if we never put the bracelets on? Like, I mean, I know that we did, but what if we didn't? Because you're talking about that movie. What movie? Avengers. <laughs> Avengers. Oh no! In the sequel to the don't the Purple Man movie. <gasps> okay, so we can go back 
in time and never put them on. But we still want him to put them on. But we'll have them, no, but they would just be able to put on. No, Gartok would be a bad dad if he didn't put them on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, now it seems like his kids didn't want anything. We just, we don't, I, it feels like we don't want to monkey around with like time a whole lot. Now, here's the question. You definitely do not. Have you any of you seen Primer? <laughs> but what are we talking? We don't know how to time travel. We got the remote. That's right, Ron. On the remote, I'm looking at Anthony. There's a rewind button. <laughs> okay. That's true. We could send someone back, and then maybe, maybe we just have him write something else on there. And then right now, where he is here, he'll have something else. Yeah. You know, like we can have him write. You know, like first of all, we can like maybe it seems like there's some loopholes in this thing that we should clear up. Oh yeah, we could do, do another pass of notes on it. But maybe we can punch it up a little bit. But then we could also like write something that he can just take them off and give it to us. Oh yeah, because like if we ask them, he can take them off. Yeah. But only us, right? Yes, There's only other us. people to take him off because we don't want him to take him off. But we, uh, you know, we don't want him to. You know what I mean? None of you have seen Primer. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, but you've seen Primer. Oh, I watched right? it. I watched it many, many times. Daryl, this I, makes you. I really wanted Carol to be impressed with my understanding of it. You have I no put idea a hand how many times. on Daryl's shoulder. You've been training for this your whole life, Daryl. Okay, I think I could do this. I also think it kind of fits because, you know, I, I, I've been trying to get better at, at, you know, talking about things right away. But, like, I really need some time with this Frank stuff. So, like, if we did go back, it's been a couple months. I'd have to stay alone. I'd have some extra time to think about this whole. Oh, gosh, you're whole, right. Because we only have one charge. I'd have some extra time. We can't bring you back. I'm just going to have to hang around. And- <laughs> Hired, but give you some time to think you about can't show your face to anybody. You yeah. can't. Oh, yeah. Not Dude. even our, Us. you yourself right now. You yeah. can't. So wait a second. What we're saying is if we hit Daryl with the rewind button and we send him back in time, he can go back. And like, what would you do? Tell us what to write on? We'll change what Gartok wrote on the bracelets. And then we'll make it so that he'll give them back to us here. Yeah, we'll change what it says. And, <laughs> and we'll make you, it we'll make it so that's perfect for Willie. Okay, but the, and then you'll like what? Like hi, just hang out? Just like hang just out. Let me worry about that. I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I need you. I need you to tell Grant okay. that he's my life and okay. tell Carol that I love her. And, hey man, and you're if, gonna tell them that yourself. Yeah, yeah I in know, the future. But, but if you did, we send you back to the Cretaceous period, I'll tell them that. For and you. if I don't come back and you gotta get Frank out, just tell him. Tell him he's got a good grandkid and, and, you know, his son tried his best. Okay? Okay. I give Daryl a big hug. I say, I believe in you, man. All right. We're going to see you soon. Okay? We got to do this. This is our best way to get home, man. Press, press the remote, Glenn. Well, don't we have to roll for it? <laughs> just press the remote. No, you don't. Because just, I rolled a natural 20 on the remote, it just, you just do it. Just Holy press the shit. remote. Okay. So, Glenn... Points the remote at Daryl. I can't watch. And I press the rewind button. All right. As you press the rewind button, you feel the controller fizzle out in your hand. It burns up from the inside as the battery finally expires. Its final charge expended. From the perspective of everyone except for Daryl, you see him vanish suddenly. (laughs) And now, from Daryl's perspective, everything. Oh, actually, Anthony, one sec. Can you roll a dice for me? Can you roll perception check? Yeah, could you roll? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Perception check for whom? For, for you, yourself. the dungeon for you. master. Yeah. Uh, I got a 19. Okay, so what you see is immediately as the dog leaves the door, Daryl comes right back in with a beard and a big bindle, and he goes, hey, everybody. It fucking worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked flawlessly, Daryl? It worked flawlessly. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. Well, Do you want to check it? Yeah, Anthony, we went back in time. Do you want to work, check right? it? I mean, yeah. Did you go back to a previous on, episode Anthony. to edit something I'm going to need you to put on headphones right now. Are yeah. you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Can you go to episode two? Yeah, go back to episode two right now. What? What? Right now. Go what? online. Go to episode two. In fact, and actually... I don't know if it worked, but I'm pretty sure it worked. There's only one way to know. Yeah, go ahead and plug in your, uh, your computer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get a mic over here. Ads. <laughs> fucking ads. Damn. Did you go back in time before this podcast is popular when I could just fucking listen to it? I feel like we need more practical values here. Like, there are some things that you should not buy store brand for. <laughs> Toilet paper. Um, is it mac and cheese. 
That's true, actually. Yeah. Okay. No, it's not okay, Daryl. <gasps> what the? What? what the? Oh my God! There's two Daryls. I'm Daryl in the future, but don't worry about it. Okay. Daryl so. from the future? Oh, we're already dealing with time travel. Oh, hold what? on, wait, wait, Anthony. Are you okay with future time travel shenanigans? There are only two episodes into this podcast, Freddie. It's fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> close his eyes and pretend this is not happening. Okay, so yes, I'm terrible in the future, but don't worry about it. Pretend I'm not here, but just listen to my words, and you got to change what the bracelet says. Just trust oh, me, wow. it's important oh, for later. Okay. Okay. from the future, of course. What exactly, you exactly. You guys did a good job. <laughs> this is pretty good. Just a little clarification. Just say, treat your kids in the same way you don't want to be treated, but it's always been a loophole in the golden rule here, but if you don't like yourself and you would actually treat yourself badly, that doesn't mean you can hurt your kids or hurt anybody they love, actually. Oh, Keep that in there. that's pretty good. Right? Wow, that should have always been. Of that. Yeah. yeah. Also, continue on with, and you have to respect your kids' decisions. Remove that within a certain boundary thing. Do not give... Oh, does that get us in trouble? Does that become like a bad thing? Henry, 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 Henry. No. Henry. Too many questions. Henry, you can't ask questions in the time. This is irrelevant to the future. <laughs> and you can leave all the Dragon Age stuff. That's all good. It still applies to us. Dragons become adult when they're like 100 or whatever. Okay, second bracelet. These bracelets cannot be removed by anybody other than these four dads. And then you can keep all the toilet paper stuff in back and Oh, that's stuff, okay? great. Okay. Are you cool with that? Yeah, uh, no. We really right. worked uh, that out hard. So what do we do now? Are you on the adventure with I gotta us? run. Pretend I'm not here. Do everything as you would have done as if this didn't happen. Just pretend this didn't happen. <laughs> Goodbye. And don't follow me. And then uh, Daryl just runs away into the woods. And then other Daryl is like, oh, hey, guys. Is that cool? We got the bracelet? Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Of all the things that I thought would happen with your playing, that was not one of them. Oh my god. So new viewers are just going to be like, uh. <laughs> Spoilers, I guess? Holy so, shit. Daryl's got the bend on. He walks over to Gartok. Be like, Gartok, I'll be taking those bracelets. Thank you very much. Ugh. And Gartok's like, yeah, no, I remember there was a time <laughs> where I guess you were going to eventually come and get. Oh, so you're the. Whoa, whoa, primer. <laughs> yeah, right? Whoa. It's weird. Um, thanks. Thanks a lot. So Gartok goes, yeah, no, go, go ahead, take it. And he puts his arm out and allows you to uh, remove the bracelets as only you four can do. Hey, Gartok, can I have a quick dad huddle with the dads here? We'll be right back to you. Yeah, yeah, go for Darryl. it. Holy oh. shit, Daryl. What did you do? A lot. I learned a lot. I'm the same person, but changed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. It's, um, oh my second. fucking god. <laughs> Daryl, did you get like six free months of prep turns for like this final You battle? have to be kidding me! <laughs> There's a lot I want to talk about. There's a lot I want to say, but right now we got a friend in Gartok here and I, I got to show you guys something. I don't know if this was a good idea. I just thought it'd be important. I had a lot of time just hiding out, making sure I never crossed paths with you. It was hard. There were times where I was like, mistakes that we made that I thought maybe I could fix, but uh, I learned about primer. I don't want to, I don't. <laughs> I went back to Gartok's cave where we first met. And that's what this bindle is. Is what? I brought back the bones of the kid we killed in case we wanted to. What I don't the know. fuck? Why? Well, Which was, kid? The, the, his dragon. I felt. I always felt bad. We that was should... the one mistake. I was like, maybe we could wow. fix. So like, I, I opened up the bindle and there's a bunch of dragon bones. Girl, <laughs> and Gartok's like, what you got there? Nothing. What nothing. Are you guys Gar about? Nothing. Gartok. Daryl. We. Oh, it's not just for you because it's been a while. But remember, we had this whole thing when we brought back Doug and we realized he didn't have a soul. Because when you can't bring them back all the way. I know. I just really kind of didn't agree with your whole mom's thing about what no. the soul is. So. <laughs> you so said your mom's never been wrong. You barely met her. I'm sorry. I, that was. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I'm man, sorry. I know. I'm sorry. Was... Your years alone. I think we should put this away. Okay. <laughs> I think we shouldn't let Kartok see this. I think it would really upset him. I'm going to go give it a real burial then. Okay. It was just kind of lying there. Yeah, man. I think I that's back. right. Maybe his soul will be at peace. But yeah, dang, dude. Yeah, no, I don't think we should do that. Okay. Well, yeah, we got these bracelets, and this would be perfect to put on Willie. All like, right. Well, we're one did step. Did you bring any of the other stuff that we lost? No, I was afraid. I didn't want to go anywhere. So you got been. the dragon bones, but you didn't get like our car or anything. <laughs> our car, our car's in the real world, Bron. If I came back with a car, we'd just be home by now. I didn't find a way back. Yeah, Honestly, I you spend... know that'd be too easy. <clears throat> but Ron, I do have a little something that, what? that might. Uh, what? Uh, what do you have? <laughs> got a business idea. Oh, <laughs> oh, a business idea. I did spend most of the time at, I felt pretty bad. In fact, actually, another good news is definitely that barmaid or the bar, sorry, the bar owner is, uh -oh. on, is, is on our side now because uh, I- <laughs> You piece of shit! <laughs> you fucking I, piece of shit! I spent the six months at her place because I knew we were never going to go Why back there. at her place? 
and I just felt bad. So I, I cleaned up and I and I made brew. And honestly, I've gone pretty good. Not as good as my sisters. And like I spent some time with myself. Honestly, she's a really nice person. She taught me a lot about. So I, I I but my beer's going pretty good. And maybe Ron, when this is. Over. Anyways, that's a lot. I have a lot of time to talk about. I have a whole business plan. We'll figure this out. So we cut to <laughs> the forest where your portal is. And the Lance and his crew are assembling a catapult and Dad Killa's like sh- sheltering himself from the sun. Boreanis and some of his goons walk by the lady from the inn. What's her name, by the way? I feel bad. Just I don't remember what I her name is. I literally don't think she had a name. I don't think, I don't know if she had a name. And she's just doing fucking bench presses of just two big barrels of ale on either side of a pole. And they're like, ah, and Boreanis is like, hey, you ready to kill that piece of shit, Daryl, for, for screwing you out of all that beer? And she goes, oh, absolutely. There's nothing I hate more than somebody welching on a deal. I am definitely going to kill Daryl Wilson. And then they leave and she turns the camera and she <laughs> winks. <laughs> back to you. Daryl, what's yeah, her name? Yeah, what was her name, Daryl? We never got her name. Her name is Sweet Matilda. Ah. Uh. That name was sent to us by Cassidy. Thank you, Cassidy. Sweet Matilda is her name. Matilda or Sweet Matilda is call her Sweetie sometimes. I thought it was weird at first. Like, I should call you Sweetie. Daryl, That's her, uh, actually her name. Not to, not to, you know, I mean, how close did you and Sweet Matilda So get? look, it was Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the real Cut deal. back to Sweet Matilda. <laughs> she takes a picture out of her, out of her <laughs> coat. It's of her and Daryl together on a moonlit night that may or may not be sexual depending on what Daryl says next. <laughs> but she looks at it with a great deal of love in her heart and she a single tear rolls down her cheek and she puts it back into her coat. Look, she's gone through a lot and we definitely helped each other out through. Look, look, the point is, look, the point Beth is and I just did this look that is definitely the look Henry and Ron just gave each other. <laughs> like <laughs> The point is, not only is she on our side and I didn't even think she was going to do this. I thought she was just going to join us and, and join the army. But she actually infiltrated and wow. as a spy in their castle or in their whatever it's called. Oh I just gosh, called it a castle. The stronghold, I guess. The stronghold. That's really, really wonderful. Wow, Daryl, you're so productive. I'm so proud of you, man. Big you day for up? you, Daryl. It was more than a day. But, um, <laughs> you know, man, I think you needed this. I did. Let's I get I back did. to camp. All right. Okay. I don't know what to do next. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. That's fantastic. That's exactly the kind of shit I was hoping would happen, but I never would have predicted that. Um, <laughs> okay. But in guard talk, hey, still, you should still be good to your kids, man. I mean, I guess they're like, they're on their own now, but you know. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you'd taken these away a while ago, I would have been like, haha, time to go re enslave my kids. But like, I'm just, I'm just tired. I got, I got rent due next week, and uh, this Chonkies isn't going to, you know, run itself so oh like, hold on i got you i go back outside of the chonkies and i start shouting i'm like actually this is really it's it's a it's good it's no closed. poop here i don't make a commission it's not gonna help me if more people come to the ch- it's just, You're a, just gonna stress them out yeah, more. I just, oh, oh, great, yeah now i need to be busy i was just gonna have some i'll get a couple minutes alone to myself this is a very busy chonky we're sorry Gartog, would we're, you want a better job yeah, I would love a better job. You want to become job. part of a, of a fast team growing, or, a, or a big... A fast-growing competitive industry with a lot of room for upward mobility. What are the if benefits like? If, uh, benefits are... Um, Money. Money? You got it. What do you, what do you want me to do? <laughs> um, we'll figure that out. Glenn here is going to write up a job description, but uh, let's get us back to camp. It's a really cool com- um, company. We're I mean, we got a lot of great employees. A team. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, you know where to find me. No, well, come with us now. We'll just, yeah, you, come, I'm coming with you. Yeah, okay, yeah. Come yeah. On. You know what? Quit this job. This job. <laughs> and he throws his hat down and steps on it uh, and, and then follows you back to camp. And then the manager, Dale Chonky, comes out. He's like, hey, what are you doing? All right, Captain Crunchies cannot stand this kind of treatment. Hey, Dale Chonkies, do you own this place? <gasps> yes. Oh, <laughs> I, this is, happens to be the day that I visited this particular this is branch. The flagship chunk. You want a big? You want like a catering? <laughs> Daryl, slow down, man. We go <laughs> I have a lot of time to plan about this. I just say, we need food, don't we? And you have terrible food, right? And Glenn, you said we need I terrible hate. food for this fire festival. That's true. We need cheese. Hey, can you do a cheese sandwich? I need you to put a thousand <laughs> cheese sandwiches into some styrofoam. Can That'll you do be that? 500 coins. If that's what, if you want coins me to cater. We yeah, have 500 pennies. You only have gold and you know it. You have never had to buy anything for a penny. What if I told you you could cater the most exclusive influencer driven All right, social roll your 37% media of fucking persuasion, of you pieces of what shit. What if I told you it didn't actually have to be a sandwich, just a couple of pieces of bread and then a cheese? Exactly, Ron. You have full license to cut as many corners as you need. Oh. This appeals to Captain Crunchies. Yeah. We're actually trying to make a... plus 1432. So, yeah, with a 32, he goes, you've got a deal. 500 coppers it is. <laughs> so you have 0.5 less gold than you did previously. <laughs> this is uh, incredibly productive. What we just productive. did was FOMO. Feel out meal opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. You got it, Ron. God damn it. 
So you return back to your beach camp with Gartok in tow. The world is your oyster in terms of more climb actions you can take. That only took two hours. That's pretty incredible. It only took two hours. It was really quick, fast. Dog's good. Tell us what's Daryl look like after six months. So Daryl is... I just pulled six months out of my ass. Please tell me. Yeah. Someone who's been keeping track of the continuity's head is probably exploding every time I say that. Two to six months. Yeah. Everybody who keeps track of continuity's head is exploding literally every (laughs) day. Daryl looks pretty um, happy. He's got nice, clean. He looks like he just worked at a bar for a while. And uh, he's a little plumper around the edges. He's been having some good drinks and having some good food. Daryl's been working at a bar. Does Daryl have like a cool sleeve tat now? Did Daryl get like a like an? I'll IPA say that bur- you don't see any tattoos right now. <laughs> okay. There's no tattoo you see. Thank you, Will, for Sweetie that. Pulls out another picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's her tattooing him. Yeah, it's her tattooing him in a very specific place. She's tattooing the Kate Winslet "Heart of the Ocean" picture, <laughs> but it's Daryl on Daryl's back. <laughs> hey Henry, What's how up? come Glenn got to like do a metamorphosis in prison, and Daryl got to do yeah. a metamorphosis in like time show? When are we gonna change? change when we- <laughs> <laughs> you know what ron we don't need to change man we're the two dads that we've already got it figured out that's what i think they needed you know they needed some time oh. to get our- henry oh. you got it glenn come here i just want to give all three of you all three of you i had a lot of time to think i just want to say you guys already changed man you guys the one thing i realized the one thing that really stuck with me is i had a great dad and and you know i'm still trying and struggling you guys had it so much harder than me and i'm just so proud of what the sort of dads you became i just Aww. you know it took me a while i just want to really that's just, you know, you guys are great dads, all three of you. That's all. You don't need to change anymore. I mean, we all do, but like you're, you've done a lot. Yeah, my, my kids are pretty out of control. I probably need to work yeah, on that a little bit more. You'll get it, Henry. You got this. I need to kill my dad. No, uh, Glenn. <laughs> honestly, guys, some part of me regrets that I feel like Glenn could have used the six months, but then I was like, you know, he already had like 20 years. Oh, ugh. well. No, but that was before. His th- I'm sorry, Glenn. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. I will quench my thirst with the blood of my father. Squeak, squeak. So here's the thing. I think I should go talk to Peyton. Yeah, man. And just like. If you, yeah, I assume you've had some time to think on what you want to do about that. And we got to break it. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it's pretty inside. I put it on the wall and no matter how many, you know, after. Damn, in he's between already primer, talking about Peyton like it. No, oh, no, I, I, I definitely, he's not an it. He's like, he's, he's like another, I mean, not quite a son, but like, he's like another son of ours. Like he's, he's like, he's like our son. That's what's different. No, we have, we all have our kids and then Peyton's like Yeah, it's kid. like, you know, we have like stepsons and then it's like with Peyton, it's like. We made a baby. Yeah, <laughs> we did. No, we did. And, you and, bought a zoo. Well, you that's made a, a good baby. Point. How are you? A zoo. How are you? I feel like I got to ask you. It's like I'm not the only parent here with Peyton. Like, how do you guys like? Are you okay with the way I see it, man? Mm-hmm. Every kid's got to grow up sometime, and we just know who Peyton's going to grow up into. He's going to grow up into your dad, right? Like that's man. When you put it like that, it's like yeah, Peyton's going to grow up into like the best dude ever. But you know, I think it's important that Peyton be in charge of that. You know, like I think you got to talk to Peyton about it, and you know, you got to like I don't know. I'm going to dodge this landmine. No, and- that's good. No, you're right. I mean, look at the end of the day, like no matter how many times I wrote out on the wall, it's like you got to break this. Like we got to break it, or we're not. None of us are going home. So like we got to break this anchor. So, all right, yeah. Um, I think ultimately, you know, even though you know, your dad had already kind of died and now it's like you're kind of getting rid of Peyton and stuff like that. It's just like, at the end of the day, you know, you have two people that are like sharing the same body that both really love you like so much, you know, more than maybe one dad could. You've got both of them, so. Very true, Ron. Okay, I think I'll go talk to him. Thank you. What's Grant doing right now, really quick? So all the kids... Don't worry, I'm just going to talk to Grant really quick. (laughs) (laughs) So all the kids are surrounding Peyton, who is chugging from the uh, supper bowl, (laughs) like a big big old supper bowl full of orange juice. And they're going, drink, drink, drink. And he's like... And he like totally successfully chugs it and holds it up over his head. Grant's like, yeah, Peyton's really good at drinking orange juice, yay. (laughs) And he sees you looking older and more haggard and with a beard. And he goes, what? What happened? Did you, did it, did somebody cast a beard spell on you? What's going on? Hey, Grant. Hey, so yeah, you know how we just went out to go uh, get some food? We got a lot of food. <laughs> poor we, kid. We yes. talked to Guard Talk. Look, I'm just going to give you straight. I, I, I travel back in time. <laughs> he immediately just lays down on the ground, yeah, face down. That's how I felt. And, Don't um, worry, Grant. You're still 12. You're still 12. Yeah. I, nothing uh, else has changed. Well, now I'm wondering if I'm not. What do you mean? And it wasn't you that traveled much. traveled in. What? Yeah, I traveled back in time, just just like a couple of months. Like I still was in here in order to get some stuff to fight off Willie and everything, and it just gave me a little time to think. We gotta figure out this whole uh, 
Peyton Frank thing. So I'm going to have a talk with Peyton right now. I just wanted to just want to see how you're doing. Just give you a hug. Can I give you a hug? So he pushes himself up from the sand and dusts himself off. He goes, yeah, yeah hug, hug. I'm and really proud of you, bud. As he's hugging you, it clicks what you were saying about Peyton. He goes, oh my gosh, Peyton. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I mean, if there's any, I don't know what I could do, but if there's anything you need. I was going to say maybe Peyton needs a friend after this, but like, it's not going to be Peyton. It's probably going to be like my, my dad, your grandpa, which like you never met. So like, it's going to be pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But uh, all right, maybe we'll um, talk about it later. You know, the only only, only <laughs> hard part about yeah. No. Well, we, yeah, we will. We're I mean, he's gonna be here. We'll 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 all talk about it. And, okay. Uh, yeah, kid. You know, the only hard part about the time travel thing was just you know for six months I just miss missing you. So I'm just like I know I just left, but it's nice seeing you right now. He said he had a great time sending bar though, so he was also okay. Yeah, by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the and then all the kids and stuff saying chug 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 they say hug hug hug. Oh no, yeah, that. I was like yeah yeah the kids are going to hug hug hug. He goes guys and they're like hug 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 guy. Uh-huh. Hug, and he hugs, you, hugs you hug again time. and they're like ah! <laughs> he loves his dad he hugs his he dad real dad. good and everybody's very happy for him and they applaud. All right, Peyton, you want to bring that uh want to bring that bull over here? Oh, do you want to see me chug too? Uh, it's no big deal. <laughs> I could I could go for as long as we need to. Let's see that. Yeah yeah. Let's see that chug. Orange juice in, orange juice out. Easy peasy. Somebody. Orange me, and one of the hot trees just goes <laughs> and hurls an orange uh, toward him, and he grabs it in his hand, and goes <laughs> and squeezes it as hard as he can, which is not very hard. Uh, and like a couple of drops go into <laughs> the heart is breaking. the bowl, and he like slurps the like three drops. He goes like ah, done, and he throws the pretty much entirely unjuiced orange away. He goes ah, delicious. Vitamin C makes me stronger, keeps my bones nice and tight. What do you want? What's, a, what's Keep going my on? Bones you want are le- so tight. You, oh, do you want me to teach you some knife fighting for the coming combat? Because I can, uh, I can, I can sh- teach you a few things. Also, nice beer, damn. Yeah, thanks. You screw that at will. Hell, hell yeah. Yeah. When no, am I, 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 I time that? traveled. I've been. When am I gonna? Oh, you. T- you oh. Yeah, I time traveled. I've been oh. gone for like six months. Oh, I was gonna ask when I get to grow a beard at will, but no, time traveling. That sounds dope as heck. You won't believe what happens next, and then Rod <laughs> starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> so, Payne, you remember what? Aaron told us, and, and the whole, you, you know what you are, right? Yeah. Your dad saw, but uh, super cool, unkillable, everyone's favorite, a legend. She said, <laughs> she said one of those. Yeah. But no, that's, I mean, that's what honestly, I took that's away all, from That's it. All, all true other than unkillable. I mean, we're all going to die someday. <laughs> uh, says you, my man. But yeah, no. Yes, and your daddy's memories are in here, and he shakes the Super Bowl around. Yeah. Uh, and it gets a little, it rattles a little bit in his hands. He's like, whoa, whoa, I'm dropping, no, I'm not dropping it. Look, we, we, you, you know the situation. We all got to, these anchors are keeping us here. And I would say that we got to break them. But at the end of the day, this is, look, honestly, I don't understand this whole world. And, and I don't quite know what's going to happen. And honestly, I'm a little, you know, I'm not worried. There's a lot of feelings I have about seeing my dad right now. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's still you. Like, I don't quite understand the whole, how this world works in the souls. But like, it's, you are still you to me. So I can't tell you to break this thing. I just know that we're getting to that time and now is better than ever. So it's, I just want to know how you're feeling about it. And if you want to talk about it, Peyton has the supper bowl held aloft over his head and he brings it down to a normal height and he goes, what does Peyton think about it? To be honest, my man, I haven't done a lot of thinking about it. I just, this is a thing that I've made up that I, I say that it's entirely my idea. And so I live my life a quarter mile at a time. <laughs> Are you sure you don't have Frank in you? Because I love the road movies. That's one way to describe the Fast and Furious movies. A road movie. It was road movies. Those nine films about friends on the road. He goes, when I think about the future, I don't have much to think about. Because when I was in the UFC before you all met me, I didn't think I had a future. I assumed that my life would just be waking up, getting the piss beaten out of me, convincing myself I didn't get the piss beaten out of me, and getting up to do it all over again. So it's... I don't know, I kind of got this feeling that like every day since I met all of you has been like a gift. And if you keep getting gifts, at some point, you're going to have to like return some of the gifts because it's like too many gifts for your house. So you got to like get the gift receipt. I don't know metaphors. I'm just a fighter and the handsomest man you've ever met. (laughs) But all I can say is if it's going to make you and your son safer, and if it's something that you think is the right thing to do, I know that I have the strongest personality of anyone anyone has ever met, <laughs> including you. And the memories of your dad sound pretty dope, but I'm pretty sure if it comes down to a fight, my memories can beat up your dad's oh memories. My God. <laughs> so I'm willing to psychically 
dominate your father. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl nods proud. Daryl puts his hand on Payne's shoulder. He's like, you know what? Henry just told me, maybe it was Ron. I forget. <laughs> Henry or Ron, one of those guys told me that, you know, every kid's got to grow up. And the only difference with you is that. It I was know, me. Oh, it was Sorry, Henry. I'm going to go now. Yeah. Is that. Uh, um, it's, I it's, said some other stuff, though. No, that Ron, was said, you, Ron cool you said too. good stuff, too. You all said, y'all, again, you guys are great. Less dads. so me, but that's all right. Yeah, no. Well, family no, Glenn, you're is everything. Glenn, you got A hashtag family. Hashtag family. That, you know, the only difference with you is that we know the sort of. Or at least I know the sort of uh, man you're going to grow up into, and it's it's a great one. But I also just want to say I never knew my dad when he was a kid, and I can't imagine a better kid than he could have been than you. So I think um, neither can I. You want this? <laughs> you want? I was going to say you want to do it together, but know what? You're the tiger. You want to chuck that thing? You want to chuck that thing against a tree? You want to just smash it? How you want to do it? I'll do it my own way. But before I do, if these are going to be the last words I say to you, is just me, is just Peyton Bennett's, then I want to say another thing that I made up entirely on my own. It's all about family. <laughs> and he smashes the supper bowl over his knee. Wait, wait I want you to roll until he does, because it's... <laughs> yes! <laughs> and he, okay, so he brings the, the supper bowl down on his oh, knee. No. And for the first time oh, ever, no! for the first time oh, ever, he gets a natural 20. Oh my Anthony god! Anthony just showed us the screen. Holy shit! Holy oh my shit. god! For the first time and last time in his life, <laughs> He gets a natural fucking 20 and cleanly shatters the supper bowl Damn. over his knee. And you see Whoa. this beautiful pinkish purplish mist escape from the center of the supper bowl as they shatter and fall to the ground. And you see this mist swirl about in the air in front of Peyton and it shoots up into his nose and through his eye sockets. And Peyton goes, Aah! and he arches his back in what seems to be maybe pain or maybe confusion. And he doubles over and falls to all fours. And then he slowly stands up. But as you see him stand up, it's with a posture you've never seen him have before. His back is straighter. His chest is out further. And he carries himself with a different air. And he looks up at you with eyes that are kind of much like your own have been given the time travel recently. <laughs> eyes that are indescribably and bizarrely older and wiser. He stares into your eyes. Dad? It's Daryl. Daryl Wilson, your son. And I put my hand out. And he pulls you into a hug and he goes, my boy, my baby boy. And he hugs you very tightly. Daryl hugs back and just starts weeping. Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Henry Oak, Beth May as Ron Stampler, and myself, Freddie Wong as Glenn Close. Our theme song is All Right by Maxton Waller. Courtney Theron is our content producer. Ashley Nicolette is our community manager. Chad Ellis provides additional editing. Robin Rapp is our transcriber. Special thanks this week to Derek Rochelle and Cassidy for providing names we used in this episode. You know who else I should give special thanks to? Uh, some of our fine Patreon supporters. Folks like Victoria Cabrella, Josh Luttrell, Jerish. 51, Frederick Kloveberg, Carlo Gonzalez, Matt Channing, Jesse Lukens, Grace, Miles Atherton, Mickey, Jesse and Sawyer McEwen, Tegan Gavitt, Marvin Dangnoy, Alex Kim, Seth Day, Fancy Money, Andy Lamar, Torian Whitfield Yates, Alexandria Skinner, and Dave G. Want to hear your name potentially at the end of a podcast? Uh, well, you're going to need to become a Patreon supporter for that, but don't worry, that's not all you get. You can find mountains of bonus content, one shots, behind the scenes videos, Talking Dad, a show about this show where we talk about the episodes after they air and more at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads the monthly bonus of indeterminate content this month which we're releasing the day this episode's coming out is uh one where we play kids on bikes which is a system where you play kids on bikes very you know stranger thingsy kind of we don't take it in that direction don't you worry we also got our next stretch goal coming up with sort of what if marvel style where we explore the entourage hell universe anthony prepared for glenn's trial just in case there's really a lot of stuff on our patreon and plus you'll get ad-free episodes and you'll be supporting this podcast 
podcast directly. Big merch update, too, for all you merch fiends. We got restocks, new pins, new prints. Check it all out. It's on our website, DungeonsAndDaddies.com. Our Twitter is Dungeons and Dads. Our subreddit is Dungeons and Daddies. Our next episode is August 24th. I know I boned this one up last time. I double checked my calendar just in case. August 24th. We'll see you there. There was a time when you could read between the lines. You know they never brought you down. Never brought you down. I'm so bummed you left the mac and cheese thing. I was going to say, with well, a second that Daryl went back in time, suddenly you're in a mansion because he's been buying only store brand mac and cheese. <laughs>